Hi gang, welcome back to Crazy Life Homestead. I'm Mo, and I want to do something in the kitchen today that's very dear to my heart. Um, my grandmother passed away in 1985. She was 86 years old. Uh, she is from Ireland, uh, Galway. Her name was Margaret Keane. She is from the Dowd line in Ireland. My sister is doing our genealogy line and she has found out a lot of information on the Irish and the Norwegian side. I should add Finnish in there because I think she's going to go to Finland, <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, but we found out that we are part Finnish also. So um, I have something today that I want to make. Um, this is going to be dedicated to her and to the rest of my currently living family. My hope is that you guys will help this recipe live on. Uh, Grandma meant a lot to me. I'm sure she meant a lot to everybody in this family. She was a kind-hearted woman, uh, always trying to help everybody. She had, for those of you outside of the family, uh, she had a restaurant bar grill. I don't know exactly how to label this. Um, and she would serve this item in the morning to some of her patrons. Um, the facility that she had was um, a bar and grill. Uh, everybody worked it. Everybody in the family worked it. Uh, the establishment is still there. It's just called something different. It's called Archie's. It is down on City Island in the Bronx, New York. Uh, you go about half a mile, I believe it is, and it's on the left. The original bar, uh, the physical bar counter is still there. Uh, I believe that's all that's there, but they have wonderful food. Uh, uh, we went there during a funeral. Family member had, uh, we had family member pass and we went there for the funeral, I think it was back in 2021. Yeah, 2021. So anyway, getting back to this, this is called the pancake. This has, it's a scratch pancake. It has a lot of meaning to me because I used to get sick a lot as a kid. <laughs> I was a tiny kid um, and I always got bronchitis. Uh, we're also getting into the season where it's it's getting to be bronchitis season, but I make this pancake a lot and throughout the years I have kind of, you know, just kept making it. Um, I made it for my Uncle Leo once um, in his later years and he cried. I also made another uh, recipe that I have, the Irish soda bread, that I made him cry. <laughs> <laughs> Not intentionally, he just missed it. Um, his mother had passed away quite a few years before that, and he just missed it. So I made it for him, and he, he cried, which was uh, kind of special because <laughs> Uncle Leo was a diabetic as of five years old, and then he lost his sight at about 22 years old. And a little history on the family. And... Uh, Touch and, and even touch was getting there in the end of the years, but um, smell was a big sense that he had along with his hearing. Great hearing. You don't say yeah, you say yes. <laughs> so you say yeah, what? Yes. <laughs> it was an ongoing joke with the family. Anyway, he was a great fellow also. So this morning I'm going to video how to make this scratch pancake. Again, it's very special to me. Um, you can make silver dollars. They're, they're like this big for the children, and they can pick them up and eat them. Um, you don't have to make them very big, just like your normal flapjack pancake. Uh, Grandma used to make them as big as the pan. She had a 12-inch pan. She had a 10-inch pan. She had a cast iron pan. This is a 10-inch. This is what I'm going to use today. You know, these are also really good as a weapon. You know, bang somebody on the head with one of these things, it's going to give them a concussion. So, just so you ladies know, you can use these for multi-purpose, okay? <laughs> so, let's get started. Okay, this is a really simple recipe. 
anybody in the family knows grandma had a bowl like this hers had roses and pink stuff on it and that's what I remember mine is a teddy bear so it's the exact same size that's why I bought this anyway the recipe is going to call for one egg because I'm only one person if there were more than one person you would use two eggs if there were a lot of people and you were making the big big bowl batch of it then you would use three or four eggs it all depends on how many people are involved so I'm using one egg and my bowl baking powder sugar all-purpose flour some milk and of course we have butter for the pan so let's get started on this in this bowl I'm gonna put in my little box comes with a little thing I believe it's one cup again I don't measure I just kinda go by sight okay so you want to use a cup use a cup depends again it depends on how many people you are cooking for if I was cooking for more than than one person this would probably be about two two and a half cups get my little doodad in there since I'm limited on kitchen space I have to put things away which is what we'll do. Okay, in our bowl, we'll crack one egg. Let's do it in the sink. Now, if you know anything about Grandma, she tasted everything. So that's what we're going to do. You're not going to taste a lot of it. You're not going to get sick. This is about maybe a quarter cup of sugar. So you'll know that you've made it right. Use that spoon. When you taste it and identify certain things in the recipe. And I'll explain that when we get to that point. Okay. I use a nice, I'm sorry, this is a little lumpy. I use a nice heaping spoon of baking powder. And it goes. Again, you will know how much after a while and you've cooked this long enough. Now as for the milk, we're going to gradually add the milk. Right now I need some liquid to blend all this stuff together. And I'll show you the consistency we are looking for. I don't know about anybody else, but you can use a blender. I'm using a fork. Uh, only because that baking powder gets all over the place when you're mixing this in this size bowl. You use a bigger bowl, which is fine. Um, you can probably use a mixer and get away with it. Since I'm using this little tiny bowl, I am just going to use a fork. Now whenever you got sick and you were sent down to Margaret King's house, Before you even had breakfast, she had a little pot on the stove, a little saucepan of warm prune juice. And trust me when I say she made you drink it. Because her concept of having a cold was to get it out of your body as fast as possible. This is still quite lumpy. I'm going to add some more milk. We'll probably end up to be about half a cup, maybe a little more, but graduate into it and you will see what I'm talking about. So anyway, she made you drink this shot of warm prune juice because her concept was get that infection or bacteria out of your body as fast as possible. And food was her solution to that because you it went in and it went south and that's how she 
interpreted getting the sickness out of your body. Now she is was old fashioned. She was from Ireland. They believe I believe. Um, Marion may correct me, my sister Marion, because she is doing the line on gene genealogy. That Grandma and Grandpa Keen came over to America in the 1920s. And I believe they came through Ellis Island. But they eventually showed up. Now, Patrick Keene, her husband, became what they call in New York a flatfoot. He was a police officer. Not exactly sure where, but I'm sure Marianne will tell me. Had to be in the Bronx somewhere. But, as you can see, I'm still whipping this pretty good. It's coming together. Oh, my hand hurts. This isn't the first thing I've whipped in the last couple of days. So, all right, so you can see that the batter is quite still a little thick. I might just add a little more war, um, milk to it. Just a tad, not much. That's about it. Just to loosen up just a little more. I just wanted a little. A little loose. While that's going on, let's turn our stove on. Now we're going to let this batter rest. Also, the liquid in this is going to activate the baking powder that I'm using. Now, Grandma, Margaret, said there's one thing you have to remember. You paying attention? One. You ready? This is it. This is the secret. This is the total secret that you have to remember. don't need that much. Now I taste the sweet, but now I'm tasting the popping. So now that this is active, the baking powder is active in this, this is going to bubble. Kind of like sourdough bread. It's going to bubble in here which is what we want because we're going to bubble in that frying pan over there. So I'm going to put this aside. We're going to put some ingredients away again because I have very small counter space. Um, if I'm sure if I took all this stuff off the counter that it would, you know, give me more space. But I like it here and it's going to stay here. So let's Clear this place up a little bit, let this rest, and then we'll be right back. Here we go. So I have this burner set on about medium. There's a reason why you're that close. 
more things that you have to look for when you're cooking this pancake. It's going to bubble. And as the bubbles pop and they become a cake, you'll know that your pancake needs to be flipped. There's also another thing that you'll look for is that the rim of the pancake will start to turn brown. So the sides, the edges are turning brown. We got good bubbles going on here. It's quite thick, so I'm going to flip it because it'll cook on the other side also. Very simple. One, two, three, up and over. Very simple. It's not that big. Just one, two, three. Don't move your hand too much. Just lift it, turn it. Oh, that spatter looks really good. It's starting to smell like Grandma's house. Margaret lives. So you know. Margaret lives. She lives in all of us. I'll probably turn that pan off because it's already hot enough. And it'll stay hot for quite a bit. smells like grandma's house here. Yeah, most of this dark stuff is just the butter. There you go. One pancake with some grizzle. Mm, mm, mm. And some butter. You can add syrup, you can add jellies. Back in the day, they never made that stuff. So they added sugar, which is what we're doing. Get your hot tea with milk and sugar. It'll wash it right down. You guys, thank you for coming along on this one. I hope you try this. This is in honor of Margaret Keene. What a great woman she was. You guys stay safe. Stay out of trouble. We'll see you on the next one. <laughs>